On Thursday, March 7th, the Public Relations Director for the B3As, Tonic Williams, hosted a press conference to give an update on the upcoming 2013 B3As Clifter Trials. In attendance were the B3As executives, statistician Coach Ricardo Roll, B3A's Treasurer, Philippa Arnett, Public Relations Director, Tony Williams, First Vice President of the B3A's, Aram Lewis, and B3A's President, Mike Sands. Also present was elite athlete, Laverne Eve. Bahamas Athletics brings you the press conference in its entirety. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here at the B3A's office, where we are here to launch the 2013 B3A's Carifta Trials. The CRIFTA trials this year is very important to us because as everyone knows by now, we will be hosting the 2013 CRIFTA Games. The date is March 15th and 16th at the new Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. The event will start at 6 o'clock on both nights. That's the 15th and the 16th at 6 o'clock. And the admission is $5 for general admission. $4 for students, and $3 for children, and that will be children between the ages of 3 and 12. This Carifta Trials is very exciting for us. Um, like I mentioned before, um, it will be during the Easter holiday, and it will serve as a qualification meet for our Bahamian athletes. Um, as you would know, um, over the last two weeks, we have held the GSSSA the government school meet and the private school meets championships are going on right now. And so these are pre-meets that will assist our kids in qualifying and the Carifta trials will serve as the final meet before the Carifta games. And so this is really important at this point in time because we do, while we do have some qualifiers, um, there's still a lot of slots to be filled. And so we are hoping that we have a lot more qualifiers at the Carifta trials. The, Car the Carifta Trials is also important because it will serve as a preparation meet for the Carifta in terms of having the stadium, the volunteers, and all the, our technical people prepared for the meet. And so, you know, it's, it's going to be an exciting meet. Um, it's going to be a meet where everyone can come out and really get to know our athletes, support our athletes, and it's just going to be a fun atmosphere. It's going to be full of excitement. Um, we've spoken about qualifiers, and I would just like to highlight at this point in time um, what we have been doing as an administration to really prepare our sport, but specifically prepare for the Carifta Games in terms of talent search. And this might be something that persons may have heard about over the last couple months. And right here next to me is Laverne Eve, a past Carifta um, Austin Sealy Award winner and gold medalist, and she had that for us, that program for us, which was the Carifta Talent Search. So I'll invite her at this point in time to bring some um, updates on exactly how that program has gone. Uh, good evening. Um, <clears throat> the Talent Search has been going very well so far. Um, we have had a lot of young, uh, young kids come out. Um, I've worked. I've been working with under 20, under 17, sometimes in the shot or, or javelin, which we have been focusing mostly on javelin because that is kind of one of the weekly event in our throws. Um, at the G Triple SA, we had a young, one of our talent surge athlete through 49 meters. He won the, the javelin for the under 20 boys, um, which is very good because he's like four or five meters off from qualifying for Carifta. We had a young girl who also came out, Cleora uh, Newbold. She, under 17, which we really do need a lot of uh, under 17 javelin throwers, she did well, never picked up the javelin ever before, and at the GSSSA, she threw over 22 meters, which is very promising. Also, even though there are some kids that did not come out for the talent search, they still come in, you know, really interested in throwing, so at the GSSSA, there were, I approach a few of them who are very interested in throwing. A lot of them are young, under you know, under 15, under 17. Um, this coming week, I'll be working with a few of them because they are very close to qualifying. Just a few little technical problems we need to brush up with them, and 
hopefully at uh, next week Friday they will either qualify or they come very very close to qualifying but they are very um, enthused about trying you know uh, going to trials because they want to make the Garifta team so next week is a, a week of mental preparation and last minute um, preparation to get the to get them ready you know to compete on Friday so the talent search is has been uh, something that is you know we were lacking in the past which which we really do need and now you can see the promising athlete because because now they are coming out to you know because they are interested at, I guess at a, at a certain point in time they felt like you know the something they were not interested in because everybody wants to run and I've seen a few athletes you know in the one or the 200 meters who I feel like can be you know good javelin throwers so those are the athletes that we need to target because they're fast and they're very, you know, athletic. So this coming Carifta, I think it's going to be very exciting in the throws this year. Um, we've seen a lot of promising athletes, a lot of javelin throwers. I was very shocked. But, you know, they're there. So we just need to keep grinding. We need to keep, you know, keep our foot on the pedal and, and, and continue to encourage them to come out. So the, the talent search has been very, very well so far. Thank you, Laverne. We also um, would like to talk about some of um, the qualifiers thus far. Um, we are home, and so we're looking to feel a, t a team of at least 70 members. Um, we, we haven't reached that number yet in terms of qualifiers, but I will invite our statistician, Mr. Ricardo Roll, to come and um, just give us an update on where we are in terms of qualifiers. Good evening. To date, we have 25 individuals who've met the qualifying standards for the CRIFTA team. First, let me say that this in no way means that they've been selected to the team. Uh, there is a trial, as um, Ms. williams has stated, and the team will be selected thereafter but these individuals have met the qualifying standards thus far. In the under 17 girls category, Janae Ambrose has run a 12.03 in the 100 meters. We have Andira Ferguson at 5.42 meters in the long jump, uh, Bria Sands 1.6 meters in the high jump, as well as Celine Thompson, who also has jumped 1.6 meters in the high jump. We have three qualifiers in the under-17 girls short putt. Uh, that's Boucher Wood, Giselle McKenzie, and, La and Laquelle Harris. We believe that those numbers are very competitive. In the under-17 boys, Henry Deleuz from Grand Bahama has done a 49.3, and our own Kennard Roll has done 48.17. And when we compare those times with the rest of the times in the Caribbean, those are very good times as well. In our high jump, we have Blair Fernando and Ken Mullings at 1.95 meters and 1.86 meters. In our under 20 girls, we again have a strong team. Kamisha Cox has qualified in the 100 meters along with Devin Charlton. Devin has also qualified in the 100, and sorry, in the 100 meter hurdles. And Shanae Miller uh, at the University of Georgia has qualified in both the 200 meters and the 400 meters. And finally, in the under 20 girls, uh, Taryn Roll has qualified in the triple jump at 11.76 meters. Under 20 boys list as follows. Uh, Kirk Lewis in the 110 meter hurdles at 14.12. Uh, Steven Newball at Florida State has qualified for both the 200 meters and the 400 meters. And out of Moores Island, uh, we have James Williams, who's qualified for the 400 meters with a time of 47.91. And that's amazing seeing uh, they have not the same facilities that we have here, and they've done a good job. Uh, Reverend Williams has done a good job with those athletes. In our 800 meters, Andre Colbrook, who is currently at Essex, had, has run a 152.41, and he's qualified. And in our 400-meter hurdles, we have Xavier Coakley at 54.63 and Joshua Stubbs at 54.67.
Laquan Nairn has qualified for both the high jump and the long jump at 2.10 meters in the high jump and 7.39 meters in the long jump. And then we have Lothario Cauley Mins, who's qualified for both the long jump and the triple jump at 7.3 meters in the long jump and 16.44 meters in the triple jump. And his twin brother, Lathorn, has also qualified for the triple jump. And so we're looking forward to having them back. Uh, and hopefully they're going to do what they always do, which is bring us medals. And finally, in the under 20 boys, Denzel Pratt has qualified in the javelin at 57.54 meters. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roll. Those are just, um, some of, those are all the qualifiers um, to date. Um, you would have noticed that he mentioned both local and also some of our international or collegiate athletes. Um, several of them have expressed an interest in coming home and being a part of the Karifti Games. And that's certainly encouraging to us because they would bring a wealth of experience. Um, if you've been following, you would know that Andre Colebrook was second in the 800 at the Junior Nationals Championships. Stephen Newbold would have been first in the 200 and second in the 400 at the ACC Champs. And just recently, um, Sinead Miller was named the SEC Freshman of the Year. And so with them coming back, we're looking to have a very dominating team um, of older athletes in the sprint events. Um, with that being said, um, you know, we, we have two persons that can represent in each event. And as the statistician, Mr. Roll said, you know, just because you've qualified doesn't necessarily mean that you're on the team. And so the, the Carifta trials is not just going to be about, um, you know, watching some uh, kids just go to qualifying, but there's going to be some excitement because we may have some upsets. Right now, we have, um, for instance, Dimitri Charlton. He would have won a silver and a bronze medal in this event before. He still has not qualified, but we have Xavier Coakley and Joshua Stubbs that have already qualified in this event. And uh, Janico Cartwright um, in the under 17, as an under 17, he, has the, he had gotten the gold medal at this event, and so far he hasn't qualified. Stephen Newbold has, and so has um, the young kid out of Moores Island. And so it's going to be very exciting to see whether some of um, our past medalists are even going to make this team. Um, similarly, we have um, Anthony Butler and Ashley Riley, both past medalists, still have not qualified. And so the Carifta trials is really going to be exciting because you know, we may have some upsets and we may have some young persons that will really be in contention <coughs> to making that team. Um, we would like right now to invite the president, Mr. Mike Sands, to bring any closing remarks that he may have. Thank you, Tony. Uh, we are 22 days away of about 528 hours away from the opening ceremonies of what promises to be the most exciting sporting event of the year. However, the road to Carifta 2013 starts with the trials that will be held this March on March 15 and 16, as you've been made aware. Um, as has also been indicated, it's going to be one of the most exciting trials ever, simply because it's going to be on home soil. Uh, we've made the pricing very affordable so that the fans and family and friends can begin to come out and get excited about what's going to happen 14 days later. Uh, the trial registration, I want to encourage all athletes to register. Um, it's a $20 registration. The trial is mandatory for all locally based athletes, um, U.S. based athletes. Um, we recognize and appreciate their obligation to the school. However, they should send in a note indicating their um, inability to attend the trials if their school obligation. The risk, we, we, we encourage everyone to attend the trials. The risk of not attending the trials, obviously, as you can see, the key in competition is that if a local athlete's time um, is equal to yours, you're going to have to you know, have a, a, a far superior time than that locally based athlete in order to be considered um, for the team. However, once an athlete comes home that is away in school and he is selected to the team, they will be reimbursed for their air ticket and coming home to the trials. And so where it is possible and practical, we ask all 
um, athletes, uh, family and friends to take note, to come home for the trials so the playing field is level and it does not become as subjective as uh, we would want it to be. But it becomes very objective based on their performance. Um, as, as the PR direct indicated, there's a maximum allow of 70 athletes, and which is broken down into categories. And so, you know, we are looking to field the best possible team um, that we can on home soil. And we are asking family and friends and everybody else to come out. Registration closes. It's a $20 registration. And it's very, very important to note that while the clubs and the coaches will probably make every effort to, to register the athletes, we've had experiences where athletes were relying on the coach to register them. It's important to note this is not a club event. It's an individual event. And so therefore, again, the onus should be on the athlete and their family and friends to ensure that you are registered. F check with your coach to ask the coach if you're registered. If not, the registration forms are in the office and they will be distributed. Registration closes on March the 11th, which is next Monday. And so we want to feel the best possible team ever. And so we're encouraging everyone coaches, athletes, um, trainers, family and friends, ensure that your athlete is registered for the trials. And at the end of the day, we go into the Crifter Games um, with the best possible team that we can feel for 2013 on home soil. And it's going to be a great event. Thank you. It is March 15th and 16th at the new Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. The price is very affordable at $5 for general admission, uh, $4 for students, and $3 for children. Um, Team Bahamas, I, I know it's ready. We will put the best athletes forward. Uh, we won 40 medals last time, came second, and we are really gonna ensure that this, this Carifta Trials is the best so that we can put the best persons on that track come Carifta this Easter. Thank you. The trials on March 15th and 16th is gonna serve as a full dress rehearsal for the actual games themselves from the point of using this side as a warm-up, um, where there'll be the call area, I'm going into the marshalling area, and, and everything will simulate what is to take place 14 days later. So we're going to be using both facilities because it is a full dress rehearsal with the officials and the volunteers and everyone to, so they will know the assignments um, come on the, 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 the eve of the games. And so this will be a dry run for us to work on any kinks that we may encounter during the course of the trials that would be expected um, to be resolved by the day of the games. So I just want to emphasize that point as well. <laughs> the qualifying standards, it's, it's tantamount to if you made the qualifying standards in the Olympic or the World Championship. You know, the standard is set. Um, that's what's the, 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 the benchmark to meet. At the end of the day, it's imp the, the day of reckoning is you line up on the, on, 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 on the starting line together. And so the, because if you have three or four persons that have met the standard, you only allowed two. And then you may also have an athlete that may not have peaked at that point in time. And so an athlete that may not have met the standard, okay, comes to the starting line with two or three athletes that have met the standard. And then that athlete, okay, because he was peaking and gearing towards the trials, he then now wins the race and meets the standard. And so those two athletes that would have met the standard is beaten by an athlete that also met the standard. And so, you know, the standard determines, you know, the, the trials. That's why it's very, very important to attend the trials and come to the trials because your standard as a said so does not automatically give you birth to the team. Yeah, but on the flip side, too, the athlete who met the qualifying standard uh, racing at that level all year long, he might have a bad day. So, well, you know, you throw that out too? Well, well, see, we don't throw it out, but at the end of the day, you know, again, uh, I mean, the, stand, the, the trials have to stand for something. And so you have to be in your best game. You know, it's being prepared at the right moment in time. I mean, we could go into examples of, of what a bad day means to some athletes, mm -hmm. but then that's a good day for others. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very important. You know, you cannot dismiss the trials, um, and that's why we, we, we encourage everyone to attend, uh, because we also have other examples. Let's use an example where, let's say we have a 400-meter runner, and I always use this example, right? If a locally-based athlete runs, say, 48.5, Right, for the sake of this argument or this discussion. And then the U.S. based athletes run 48.3. That's two tenths of a second. You know, we now have to make, but that athlete at U.S. based didn't come at home, didn't come home for the trials. The local based athlete runs two tenths of a second slower than that U.S. based athlete. Okay? Do we, and this is a question, I'm not saying this, do we now decide that we're going to ignore the fact that the locally based athlete that is a year younger, 
training home locally with a local coach um, is running only two tenths of a second slower than the U.S.-based athlete that, that using your same argument that had more athlete and uh, more competition running more consistently. Do we now determine that we're going to displace this locally trained athlete um, for the athlete that had more opportunities than him for two tenths of a second? No, no. The the, the you know um, let let's appreciate that the yellow C for the Crypto Games is out there. Um, going after as much um, funding as they can get. The games are pegged at $1.2 million, which is a huge sum of money. And so we recognize and appreciate that there's only so much dollars to go around. But notwithstanding that, you know, when we look at it, right, the B3As must host these crypto trials. And so while we may have short, fallen short of a corporate sponsor, at the end of the day, on the flip side of it, it works in our favor to the extent that the B3As and so not to confuse uh, the deliverables that the other sponsors would have been expecting. The B3 is, um, has to host the trials. And so we thought it was very fitting to ensure that it is, is a clear delineation between what is happening. In this case, the B3 is hosting its career to trials um, to prepare the team for the, the selection. I, I would say I would say yes. I would think it's been growing, you know, um, very very um, progressively. And I think I think you know it is by no uh, short imagination that persons are getting very excited. And first of all, the newness of the facility, you know, in itself, you know, because I think we are all still in awe that we actually have a real stadium that we can go in and we can call home. So I think persons are excited about that, and also the fact that you know athletes we've been able to train and compete there. I think also creates, you know, we like new things, as we say, right? And so um, I, I think that there's a question, I'm sure, I'm sure when the Treasury look at her numbers in terms of the return from the gate, we can easily measure that the attendance um, has been growing um, significantly. Well, I'm sure um, Tommy is smiling on us. Uh, you know, the first real official event is going to take place um, in, his, in, his, in the facility name in his honor. And, um, you know, we are grateful that Tommy uh, passed our way and that we are the better off for it. And that's because, you know, when we measure the success of track and field, we will always refer to the great one. And so it's a little sadness that he's not going to be here to witness it. But if we know Tommy, um, as we, some of us, have done very intimately, you know, we can just see him now standing there with that wonderful million-dollar smile on his face, being proud of what has been accomplished, first and foremost, with the facility being completed, and then the fitting tribute to him that the first official event is going to be an international or regional event, um, and that is going to obviously bear significantly to the fact that he has made this possible because of the pace that he's set for us, and we're still measuring ourselves against his performances. No, but first of all, I'll tell you this. Bahamas is not waiting for the last minute. The press, the ticket office is open 10 to 2 every day, and again from 4 to 7. And there's been a steady stream. I just left there a few minutes ago. There's been a steady stream of persons. And while there are seats available, the public need not really panic. Yes, the prime seats are at a minimum, if not all gone. But bear in mind, there are 15,000 seats in the stadium. And so when we talk about prime seats, we're talking about 3,000 seats maybe that has been designated as, you know, track and field uh, prime seats a little different from other prime seats where people may consider, well, the 50-yard line is a better seat versus the, the top of the finish line. There are no garbage seats in the stadium. I mean, be clear, I'm sure I can speak to that. There are no garbage seats in the stadium. The design of that facility gives everyone a nice panoramic view of what is happening on the field. But the preference for a finish line seat is at a minimum, if at all. We priced everything uh, economically, uh, $55 for a season VIP package. And then, of course, we went from $15 to $5 to make it affordable, taking into consideration the multiple effect of purchases and everything else. And so there are still a good number of seats left. I just think that the issue of who wants to sit over the finish line becomes um, a, a question. And as the treasurer said, it's sold out. But and having said that, though, and just for the record, we have had discussions, discussions with the um, NSA with a view that in probably 10 days out from the games, um, if we recognize that all of the seats are entirely gone, which will be a good problem to have, then we are discussing with them the possibility of bringing in you know, additional bleachers because there is provisions for the expansion of the facility, and uh, we've already identified you know, where those bleachers can go to increase the capacity by several thousand more. Well, there are 26 member federations of the um, Grifter family, 26, and 24 have uh, indicated their intentions to be here. As recently as today, French, Guyan French Guyana, which seldom attends, 
sent in their um, registration today that they will be coming with four athletes and one official. Only two countries we have not heard from yet, and that is Antigua, Barbuda, and um, um, Belize. Okay, so we are pretty much fully subscribed, and today there's about 530 athletes and about 160, 170 officials. Let me also hasten to add that the, there are seven, there's about 70, 75 U.S. coaches that um, have indicated their interest. Um, some of you may know Cedric Walker. He is the, the board member for the college liaison for the Scholastic um, School Organization, and he has been given the task of communicating directly with the U.S. coaches, and their registrations are going to him, who will in turn forward those to the NSA. And the U.S. coaches, along with our behemoth coaches that are in the U.S., right, will be coming home for the express purpose of recruiting. And you know, they've recognized that these games, which has been pegged by nonetheless of our president, the act as the best junior championship of its kind anywhere in the world, including the World Junior Championships. It says a lot for what these games have to offer if the president would endorse it as such. And those U.S. coaches recognizing that their, their recruitment becomes a one-stop shop because the creme de la creme of the Caribbean will be in one place. And so you know, 500 athletes will have an opportunity to be witnessed by 70 U.S. coaches. And so it's not always going to be the blue chipper that wins that's going to get that medal because those coaches are coming to look for what they need for their program. And so this, this has a several full effect um, on what is going to be happening for athletes and the development going forward. Well, first and foremost, um, you know, I think our coaches uh, are doing a wonderful job in, in managing them and, and hopefully having them peak at the right time, which is on the 15th and the 16th, um, because the kids certainly are enthused. And I guess when you, if you've been around the track every day and watching the practice, you can feel and see the enthusiasm. And, you know, success breeds success. And I think the performances of um, our Golden Knights in particular and of course, the Shanae Millers, um, you know, most recently, and then when you look at the Tony William Darlings and the Golden Girls, I think the success of the program will continue to grow based on the fact that the, uh, we are succeeding on the world stage. And so the next athlete, the junior athletes that you refer to, they want to be like the senior athletes. And so they emulate that. And, and if that is their benchmark for success, then the future of the program is in, is in good hands between the, the development of our young athletes.